Hello everyone, this is Miss Nuke with Vibe Barber College and today we're going to be talking about chapter 14. Chapter 14 in the gray or the platinum looking book, okay, is dealing with men's haircutting and styling, okay, it's chapter 14. You have a couple of learning objectives in this chapter, you have 12 of them. So you want to be sure to go through each learning objective uh, to make sure that you understand. And please be sure to read the chapter outline, okay? So I want to start off by saying that a good haircut is the foundation of a good hairstyle, okay? The importance of this simple truth cannot be overstated. To perform a good haircut, you need to be able to cut, blend, and taper the hair using clippers, shears, and razors. Diligent practice and application of these skills will help form the foundation for your future success. However, the learning doesn't stop with your barber's license. So... I completely agree with this statement. I'll start from the bottom. Um, just because when you uh, complete the program and you get your barber's license, you'll still take courses each year just to stay on top of the knowledge of it. Um, I've been barbering upward of 25 years and I still take classes. I still go to seminars. So you never know too much to learn more. Uh, and in barbering, we never stop learning. Uh, styles evolve, styles lose touch, they go out. That's just like uh, people that were in the jerry curl era. A lot of barbers went out of business after that because they were not able to revamp or reform their mental capacity to go back into the nature of barbering of what it had involved to be on the jerry curl. So you don't ever want to be stagnant um, or complacent as far as learning new skills that involve barbering because this is our profession, okay? Um, so men's haircutting and styling, barbers should study and have a thorough understanding of men's haircutting and styling because Haircutting is a basic skill that provides the foundation for hair design and styling. Uh, practicing skills and techniques is critical to being able to perform balance and proportionate haircuts and styles for clients. The more practice and experience that barbers have, the better able they will be to meet their clients' needs. Meeting clients, haircutting, and styling needs results in satisfied customers and the opportunity to build a repeat business. In barbering, that's your business. Repeats is what we live off of. Another thing would be word of mouth. Each client is a walking billboard. So even though you've just did 20 ball fades, now this is the Number 21, you should have the same consistency in ball fade number 21 as you had in ball fade one, two, three, four, five. Okay, make sure that the work is consistent because the work is going to speak for itself. It's not all the time about handing out cards and things like that. A lot of times it's about handing out great haircuts to the clients that come and patronize to sit, that patronize your shop and come sit inside of your chair. So please be mindful of that. Understand the importance of client consultation. You always want to have a client consultation, even if that has been your client for several, several years, you still want to do a consultation that this may be just that one day where that client you've done for 20 years with the taper to the wave, he decides, okay, I'm gonna do a drop fade today, but you went in with the taper. So please be sure to do a consultation. Upon doing your consultation, be sure to repeat back 
to the client what they have said to you in return because it will allow it to make sense and to register to them. Uh, some clients may say, I want a ball fade on top and then low on the bottom and then trim it up on the neck. Okay, so we as barbers, we know that there's no such thing as that. But what we don't say that, what we'll say is that we'll repeat it back. We'll say, okay, you want a bar fade, you want the top to the wave, and you want to clean the neck area up. You don't want any left left over here in the neck region. You know, there's ways to just reword things um, here and there. So, um, the client consultation is a conversation between you and the client about the client's desires. What are their expectations? Um, a lot of times, even where they work or what they do for a living comes into play of how they wear their hair. If they're corporate America or something, uh, they may wear their hair a certain way. It may go well with their suit or their tie. So please be mindful that upon the consultation that you also um, allow them to be able to tell you what they do as a profession because it will help to determine uh, what type of haircut that they'll be going into for the service, okay? Um, then discussing common questions asked during a consultation. So sometimes you wanna say, well, how long has it been since your last haircut? Or a lot of times you can look at the back part, this area of a client, and you can tell how long it has been since their last haircut by the fuzz right there or maybe their hair is gray, is uh, Kennedy's. Um, you can also tell maybe they've been coloring it. Maybe that part is gray or is white and the rest of the hair is black where they colored it. So you can tell visually a lot of times, but if you're not, you know, just ask them when was their last time. Another question you can ask them is, do they prefer a similar style? Or if they're looking for something new, maybe their last barber never offered them to try a new haircut. That's why they wear that even all over and they've been wearing it their whole life because maybe no one gave them the option to choose another uh, cut preference, haircut preference, okay? Um, so you want to ask them questions during the client consultation. You don't just want to put on them the pressure of choosing a haircut only, okay? Because it's uh, getting to know the client to know what their desire would be. What, what do they want to achieve from this service from you, okay? Um, let's see. So a word about trim. So when a client uses the term trim, what they usually mean is that they don't want their hair cut too close or they want to retain some length in their hair. So a trim, uh, sometimes they say, oh, a light trim. So you could come back, let's just say it's an afro. So each notch on our finger represents an inch. So you could say, okay, if it's an afro, you want about one inch trimmed off, you want two inches, you want a full finger, which is three inches trimmed off. And that's how you kind of tell with the whole trim word. But don't ever, um, you hear the word trim out of the client's mouth and you just go in, you know, without taking that into consideration, okay? Because maybe they just want a light little trim just to last them for the next few days or something, okay? You also want to know the basic principles of haircutting and styling to be able to describe the atomical features that influence haircutting and styling. Um, identify the sections of the head as applied to haircutting. You want to be able to identify tapering and blending areas. And it's okay because some clients with the fads changing in haircuts, some clients, um, you know, when I was... Boop, 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 coming up. A taper was taper, 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 okay? But some of them are just tapering, tapering, and they're ovaling off the back, or um, some of them are just tapering the back only and uh, leaving the top in a wave um, 
pattern. So you want to be careful that you know exactly what they're meaning with the different haircuts of sorts, okay? You also wanna be able to define design elements used in haircutting and styling um, and define basic terms used in haircutting and styling. So every haircut is a representation and advertisement. As I said earlier in the video, that client is your walking advertisement. That is your business card, that haircut, because people will most definitely have that haircut been doing to the best of your ability. People will stop that customer and they'll say, hey, I really like your cut, who cut your hair? And those word of mouth clients that you get, you will in return reward the client that the new one was referred by with maybe a $5 off or a shampoo service or a facial when they come in the next time. But be thankful for it, you know, and then this new client, you know, maybe they have a couple of sons. Maybe this new client have a couple of uh, friends or a large um, extended family that will then become your client as well. So you want to be sure that you do good work, good consistent work, because that is what this new person will be looking for in you as being their new barber. Okay. Um, you also want to recognize anatomical features uh, facial shapes. A lot of times you'll get clients and they'll sit in the chair and they'll say, um, I need a haircut. And then you'll go, okay, well, how you want your haircut? And they'll say, well, it's up to you. And that client will then proceed to start reading, getting on their phone, fall asleep. And they may not say many more words to you after that. And so it's up to you to be able to go in and say to yourself, this is this person's facial shape. This is what will best look best, you know, on this person. Rather, it is the haircut and the beard trim. Rather, it's a haircut, a uh, beard trim, facial shave, and a color service. So, however it may be, but this client is entrusting you to make this very important uh, decision for them. So, don't take it lightly. Um, make sure that you know the head shapes that will fit best with um, with that haircut. You want to know the person's profile. Their profile is their side angle, okay? So you should be aware of your client's profile since it can influence the appropriateness of the haircut or the style that that particular client wears. Just because maybe that client says, well, just go ahead and cut it like the person you just cut. Those two people may have totally different profiles, totally different head shapes, so they can get the same haircut, but it will not ensure that it will look the same. Maybe the texture of the hair is different, so there's a few different determining factors to consider before giving that a yes. All right, so different profiles. They could have a straight profile, a concave profile, a convex, an angular. Uh, what about a prominent nose shape? And then they could have a small to average nose shape. So you have to know the difference between those. Another thing is the length of the client's neck is also a factor in determining the overall shape of the haircut. Just like if a person has a very short neck, you do not want to take a person who has a short neck and line them in the back because that short neck has now turned into a no neck. So please be sure that if that person has this short neck in the back, be sure to taper it out so it can give them some longevity in the back. In barbering, remember, we minimize the features that are not so, hmm, and we maximize the features that are more favorable on the clients, okay? And with doing that on a short neck person, um, like in your textbook on 391, Figure 14, 18 has the long neck, then figure 14, 19 has the short neck. You wanna taper a short neck or bald it out, please, okay? You also want to know the sections of the head form. You got your right side, you got your right temporal, you got your top front, left temporal, your left side, 
You want to know about the crown, the back, the nape, the apex. You want to know these different points of the head because all of that helps you in conjunction with doing a haircut uh, to the client's um, to the to the client's needs. Okay. Um, another thing you want to know about your reference points, the parietal ridge is also known as the crest. That's the temporal horseshoe or the hat band area of the head. That's right here. So if this was a comb and I'm sticking it here, right here where my finger is able to slide through, that would be considered to be my parietal ridge. So you have to know those things. Another great fact about the parietal ridge is that a lot of times when you all are first beginning barbering, you really don't know where to start the bod or where to begin your fading. That comb against that parietal ridge, it helps you to determine that so that the fade is not too high up unless they want to high and tight or the fade is not dropped down too low so that they're thinking, well, it really doesn't look like my hair is cut. So please use, make your parietal ridge useful for you, okay? You wanna know the tapering and the blending areas. You wanna know about the occipital bone. That's where the comb will leave the head when it gets to the occipital area. Now, some people got that big protruding one that comes way out, okay? And then some people have a flat one. So you have to know about the, um, the occipital bone. You also wanna know about the four corners. Those are all on 393. And then as we flip over and move forward in the textbook, um, you're going to understand the design elements used in hair cutting. Um, basically, if I say design line, I'm not talking about a design line. I'm talking about this. This is considered to be a design line when you are doing your boxing. Another thing is this. You want to make sure that you are boxing a client's hairline. You do not want to do a sad face on the client's hairline. Even if it's naturally, like mine is it's a natural sad face. You don't want to do that. You want to take that. You want to take that, come across, take that, come down, boop. Okay? Very simple. Do not, do not go into a hairline starting here. You're going to start at the center here. And if you're on the right, you're going to work your way to the right. Now, if you're on the right, you just work your way to the right. Don't work your way to the left while you're standing on the right. It's going to be off. The hairline will be a seesaw for sure. Okay. Please be sure to start from the middle, work your way to the right, turn the chair, start from the middle, work your way to the left. Okay, whatever side you're lining is the side that the client should be on. Nothing more, nothing less. That's how we ensure a box hairline, box hairline, okay? Um, another thing I wanna talk about is horizontal lines. So horizontal lines are actually parallel to the horizon of the floor and direct the eye from one side to the other. Horizontal cutting lines build weight and are used to create a one limp look in low elevation or blunt haircut. So blunt haircut design. So here's the thing when we're talking about elevations, okay? So we got 180, we got 90, we got 45, okay? And we got zero. Zero elevation is considered to be the closest cut. And we know that the attachment that gives the closest cut is the five zero, okay? So be mindful of that. Uh, vertical lines are perpendicular to the floor and are described in terms of up and down. Now, vertical cutting lines remove weight within the cut and create layers. Layers may be cut from short to long, cut in from long to short, or cut uniformly depending on your finger placement. All right, and then we have a couple of figures over here on page 395. As we flip forward, the textbook talks about diagonal lines, uh, curve lines, whether it's concave and convex, convex lines are often used at the perimeter of a hair design in the nape or back area and around the face, 
okay? And another thing I wanna talk about is this, um, since we're talking about design lines, when you all have women clients, you're going to ask this woman, I know she come in, I know she come into a barber shop and I know her haircut is, you know, she's saying she wants it like the man's haircut on the poster. But however, when you get to the line area of the haircut, you're going to ask her if she wants it to be feminine. Feminine would mean that it would be, excuse me, it would be just round. Masculine would mean that it would be a actual box. So you're going to ask if they want a feminine line or if they want a masculine line. That's not being um, any type of, as far as you leading to something else, it's just a very simple barbering uh, question that is absolutely a good thing to ask female clients that come in with the low haircut, okay? Um, then the textbook talks a little bit about form. Form is the outline or shape of a hairstyle. The element of width, length, and depth create a three-dimensional shape that can vary in terms of volume, proportion, and balance. So hairstyle should be proportionate to the client's overall body shape and size and balance with the features of their head face and their neck area okay so all three of those in conjunction should be able to balance out okay so then it talks about proportion balance and space design texture um color colors like texture is different colors reflect light differently so that person that comes in with the gray hair, the knitties, and you're fading them, fading them, fading them, fading them, fading them, fading them, and you're saying, yeah, I got this fade in here, and you're looking back at the mirror, and there could be a slight of a glare there. You can easily just readjust your chair or readjust the view of you yourself, how you are viewing that haircut in the mirror, okay? Because it can throw you off a little bit. Or now uh, people are having pink hair, hair and um blue hair and all these different uh colors in their hair it helps when you are cutting their hair to the mirror is going to see everything the mirror is going to tell you everything you need to know pertaining to that haircut true but if there is a glare just reposition yourself the way that you are spinning the chair with the client in it Okay, um, dark colors tend to recede in a design and lighter colors appear to come to the forefront. So these color differences create the illusion of more or less depth and volume in a form. Okay, um, then the textbook talks about angles, a few directional terms like cross-checking. It's the process of parting off subsections opposite from the elevation or direction at which they were cut to check the precision of cutting lines or blending. Uh, for an example, a vertical subsection cut at a 90 degree uh, projection, 90 degree projection, can be cross-checked by parting off the subject sections horizontally at 90 degree again, okay? Um, so you want to make sure that you go through the degrees, the elevations. It even talks about 180 degrees in the textbook. It's often used to create layers when cutting long hair. A uh, 90 degree stationary guy is used usually in the top sections and the longer hair on the sides and back are elevated to the guy for cutting. Okay, and then as we uh, flip over through 400, 401, it talks about weight lines, refers to the heaviest perimeter area of a zero elevation or even a 45 degree cut, okay? Um, a weight line is achieved by using a stationary guide at the perimeter, and it may be cut in a variety of levels on the head. It will be depending on the style. Weight lines can be used in combination with a tapered nape area. And the perimeter is the weight line in longer hairstyles that look to be one length. Okay. 
Uh, texturizing is usually performed after the overall cut has been completed to create special effects if they want a wispy or maybe spiky strands within the haircut or along the perimeter of the haircut, okay? Tension would be the amount of pressure applied when combing and holding a section of hair for cutting. And you want to make sure that your tension is consistent when you are cutting long hair, when you're cutting layers, whether they're long layers or short layers or however they may be. Make sure that your tension is consistent in it because it helps to achieve a thorough haircut. Thinning would refer to removing excess bulk from the hair. Um... Then we have um, outlining, then we have over direction, creates a length increase in the design and occurs when the hair is actually combed away from its natural fall position rather than straight out from the head toward a guide, okay? Um, so there are only so many angles and elevation that can be used in hair cuttings. Pacific effects are created by using Pacific angles and elevation. So uh, history has a way of repeating itself in our industry. This is very true. And style trends tend to be uh, clinical in nature. So a lot of times when we think that a hairstyle is done and over with, it will repeat itself. History will repeat itself and it will come back like finger waves um, were a hit in the 20s and the 30s. And braiding has probably been around since humans first walked the earth. Mm. That's a nice little FYI. Okay, then over on 403, it goes into um, shear cutting techniques. You got two different shears. You got the French shear, then you got the German shear. The French shear has that uh, tang at the end of it, and the German shear does not have it. Um, you want to know about cutting below the fingers, cutting palm to palm. Shear over comb, and please be sure that you're looking at all these figures. Um, these are some great figures um, in this chapter, 14 Men's Hair Cutting and Styling. Uh, I would say figure 1446 all the way through. I would start at that one. Th those are some very, um, these figures definitely show you what the text is saying in word form, okay? Then just like you have free hand with your clippers, no guard, you also have free hand with the sheer cutting. So you have two different free hands. And then with clipper cutting, you have clipper over comb, you have a arching with the clipper or a tremor or a tremor. Okay, so remember this is a arching technique. Anytime you're coming over the ear or around the ear area, that would be considered an arching technique. You wanna definitely know about rotating the razor with razor cutting and removing the bulk again, recognizing basic hair cutting styles on page 411. Um, you got certain combs that go with different hair cutting styles. If it's a flat top, you're going to use a flat top comb, afro, afro pick, um, so on, taper, taper comb. Um, you definitely want to know about the pompadour fades. Um, you can also YouTube about pompadour fades. They are very prestigious fades and they are world known. They are known all over the globe, so... Um, it's a great fade to be able to put on a person's head. And when you do it, it's a sense of accomplishment that you feel uh, once it's achieved. And then you want to know about the shadow fade cut. Um, you want to know about the quavadas um, and what it entails. What are some other words that we use for quavadas? Because everyone doesn't use it everyone does not use caesar cut but you want to know you want to be able to envision what these cuts are and in a haircut service please please you all don't ever begin a haircut service without being able to envision that cut first do not even turn your equipment on if you cannot envision uh, what you are doing to the client's head, okay? It, it makes it so that you have less error that way. 
You also want to know about shaving the outline areas. Um, men get their eyebrows trimmed. Women get their eyebrows arched. Uh, men also get their eyebrows groomed. So be familiar with that. And that is um, an add-on service, which means um, added on money to your, uh, to your pocket. Uh, you want to know about natural drying, uh, finger styling, scrunch styling. And the textbook has plenty of figures all the way over past uh, 419. Then uh, on 420, it's talking about braids and locks and twists like my hair. My hair is locked. Um, then you have a couple of procedures in the back of the book, like procedure 14.1 is cutting above the fingers in a horizontal angle, horizontal, vertical. Okay, then cutting above the fingers vertically uh, on the right side. Um, then it talks more about the arching technique with very clear pictures and about please be mindful when you all are looking at this chapter and when it's talking about the arching techniques please be mindful of that ear okay some of you all know what i'm talking about but be mindful of that ear region that ear area because when you cut someone's ear no matter where you cut it that's a lot of bleeding a lot of bleeding and you can use septic powder to stop it but it's hard for that blood in this ear region to clot and to stop so it usually just runs okay and it shows you the arching technique not just with the shears but also with the outliners and also um, it shows you with the razor as well with the razor and the outline shave uh, precision cut procedure 14-4 um then the textbook goes into the back and nape sections so you want to then you have procedure 14 6 which is a full out razor cut um those are some of my favorite to do and then it shows you a flat top and also a crew cut the actual visualization of it and how to you know utilize your blow dryer different ways your blow dryer does different things different um it has different styling tools with attachments to the blow dryer okay so this is very interesting chapter chapter 14 men's haircutting and styling you're going to then go to the back. You're going to do the review questions and look over the terms, the terminology, because it is our own barber language. And you all are going to have yourselves a great day. This is Ms. Nuke with Chapter 14 by Barber College. Have a great day.